Hello and welcome everybody. It is Thursday night here once again. Uh, thank you for joining us for the Tank Show, where we spend some time acquiring new knowledge, hopefully. Uh, hopefully my monitor doesn't go stupid. I don't know what I just did there, but hey, all right, we're good. As always, I have my buddy, pal, and co-host, Chad Nuga Ed, with me here tonight. Ed, thank you for being here, buddy. It's always fun. Always a pleasure. And thank you all for joining us. Very much appreciate it. Bring my chat back up. Uh, I know we had a couple people hanging out before we got started, and I appreciate all of you being in here. Um, I don't really have a set topic for tonight. We've been doing the set topics for the past several weeks, so I always like to kind of give us a gap week and talk more with the chat, because when we do have a set topic that we go into, it tends to be that we don't get to answer all of the questions from the chat. Uh, I see KG Tropicals and your viewers just joined. Hello and welcome, uh, John and Lisa, as always, which that was just John tonight, but still, thank you to both of you all. KG Tropicals, keepfishkeepy.com. Very much appreciate the send over. And welcome to all you awesome people that are coming over from the KG stream. Uh, we already got our first question fired up right there. Uh, Matt Squatic says, What's up? Thoughts on a DIY CO2. So I have done the DIY CO2 years and years back. I uh, didn't really have any success with it, but at that point in time, uh, I was still in the part of the hobby where I wasn't really having much success with plants anyways. So I can't really attest what I have better luck now uh, than I did back then. Probably. Uh, do I still think that you're better to just kind of bite the bullet and do the investment and actually set up a quote unquote legitimate CO2 kit. Yes. Also probably, um, I do a lot of DIY stuff and that's still one thing that I haven't really fooled with recently or done any videos on as a DIY CO2, just because in talking to a lot of CO2 people, a lot of plant nerds and getting their thoughts on them. And most of them have tried the DIY kits and things like that and are actually running or have run some legitimate CO2 setups. They're all kind of like, yeah, you could do it, but I mean, it's just kind of a, a waste and it's hard to, to really do it right, especially in comparison to a legitimate kit. So my two cents is try it. If you want to play around and have fun with it, absolutely. I mean, that's, that's, that's part of the hobby is trying things. But if you're really looking for the success of CO2, then I'd say you're probably better to just save up for or break down and buy, um, an actual CO2 kit. But you, Ed. Yeah, I agree. I've uh, I built one once, and uh, I never end up putting it in the water. Uh, I talked to so many other people about it that were really into plants, and they said, "Oh, they smell. You can't turn them off. You can't. You know, there's so many downsides, and then you have to constantly be filling them. Uh, it they just didn't make it sound like it was worth the trouble." So I didn't do it, and I bought Easy Green, and it was amazing. So, uh, you know, plant fertilizer goes a long way. LED lights go far. And there are some pretty good systems out there that you can get, you know, that aren't very expensive, and they do the trick. Absolutely. And, and like you kind of touched on, uh, planted tanks have come so far in the past 15 years. I mean, making the LEDs and uh, all-in-one fertilizers, it's, you know, I use the Easy Green as well, and it it makes it so easy. Back in the day, so to speak, back in my day, um, you really had to be dialed in on, on plants to know really what you were doing, and there was a lot of time spent on forums, and the people that were doing really well with plants, you know, a decade, two decades ago, um, they were kind of like super nerds, and they they would get into some really detailed stuff just to be successful. And now it's really simple. You get a, an LED. It can even be a cheap one off Amazon. Um, get some all-in-one fertilizer. And you're, you're typically good to go with a lot of things. There are still things that require more than that. But it's so easy to get started with just that setup really cheap that it's, it's nice having a lot more planted tank people in the hobby. And for me being able to have success, because I know Ed and I have talk, both talked about how, you know, years ago we we tried plants, so we just killed everything, and it just didn't work out. It's nice to have success with it. 
Now, uh, Paul says, oh, go ahead, oh, buddy. My fish store did uh, my local aquatic aesthetics. Well, bam. Uh, oh, bam. They just got one and they're practicing to see if they want to keep, you know, keep put it in stock. But it's a system where you pour something like citrus acid and something together into this metal container and it creates mm. uh your co2 and it releases it you can put it on your own timer and everything and if it works out real well for him i'll probably buy one of those from him nice well i hope it does i look forward to seeing that video from you my friend uh, Paul's terror reminding everybody, if you want to throw me completely off and get my attention, uh, type at Fish Room Fever in the chat. That'll highlight your question or comment on my screen, and we can read that live on the air. We've got 16,400 people hanging out right now. Very much appreciate that. Only Oscar says, you have fish tanks behind you. Awesome. Yes, I do. No, um, well, I guess technically there is a green screen because you can see one of my old physical green screens back there on the wall. But no, uh, no green screen background being used tonight we're just doing the, the fish tanks it's good to see only oscars uh sebastian says hey i have a question i'm going to set up a 40 breeder should i stock it with angels or a dedicated live bear tank what's your thoughts and what live bear is best Ooh, do you want to start first with that one ed uh what was the first part uh going to set up a 40 breeder should 40 i stock breeder. it with angels or make it a dedicated live bear tank and what's the best live bearer? Well, 40, I'd go with a sword tail because they're kind of a bigger live bearer and they're pretty and they're neat. A lot of fun. Except if you go with a Gadaid, there are some really neat Gadaids. You can tell everybody, yeah, you're doing it to save the world. And they're a fish that really moves around. They just don't sit around. So at first you kind of think, this is kind of a boring fish, but they're constantly going all over the place. So... A Gadead wouldn't be bad either. You know, try to, if you could get even a Trout Gadead, you could do that in uh, a 40 breeder, or you could uh, get anything fits in a 40 breeder. It's awesome. Absolutely. Yeah, I am a huge fan of the 40 breeders. Um, you could do a couple of angels in there. Uh, angels do get fairly tall, though, especially as they get older. Uh, I mean, you'd have some time to eventually move them up if you wanted to, but they're going to get, you know, some height to them, especially depending upon which ones you get. So that makes me kind of shy away from the angels on that. <laughs> In terms of the best live bear, uh, that, that's kind of asking me, what's the best cookie? It's it's very subjective, and I can, uh, like, I did a great job of pointing out a couple of broad range things that you could look into. Uh, but what I would recommend is if you do decide to go the live bear route, there are so many amazing live bears that I would do some searching around on YouTube and find one that you really, really like. Because I could tell you, hey, do you know this, this specific thing, do the specific day, you know, do the strain of guppies, do you know the four spot? Um, I always screw that up on the common name, four spot. Widowmaker. I was going to call it the Mary Makers. Four spot Widowmaker. Flick that's quadrupunctatus. Because they're an awesome little fish, and I'm in love with those right now. So that's my favorite live bear at the moment. Uh, but again, that's that's subjective, and that's what I think is is the coolest little live bear. Um Anableps, technically. They're uh, brackish water, the four four-eyed live bear. Um, those are a cool fish, but I don't think that would really go in a a 40 too well. Um, I mean I guess it could, but I digress. Uh, my thing would be I would make sure to go through and find something that you were really, really going to enjoy spending time with. Um, and I think I gave some good suggestions on just general groups. Uh, but we want you to find something that you think is cool, not so much something that we think is cool that we think you should have in that tank. Uh, but yeah, I appreciate the question, Sebastian. Yeah. But I would definitely, I, th I think we all have have voted um, the, the live bear side of that. There's some really neat ones. I look around, you might find one that, you know, isn't even available to us. And that's kind of how it works a lot of times is you may have something that's in your area that we can't get in our area. It's like, oh, I didn't even realize that was a thing until I found out that it's a thing. 
yeah, like even half beaks there might be a neat one too, but they're going to stay at yeah. the top. So if you had half beaks, you want to have something cool on the bottom. Absolutely. Get you a school of Cory cats in there. That'd be awesome. Whips world saying hello. Hey whip. I'm sure you've noticed I've got the, the whips world shirt on. He's always very much appreciate you sending that to me, my friend. I love this shirt. Scuba Steve-O says, will Ed have Tennessee Mafia hats in Chicago? If so, can he save me one? I will in Chicago. They called me yesterday and said they won't be in time for the clash. So, mm -hmm. well, I'm saying, <laughs> well, in Chicago, they they pushed it off a week. So, hopefully, they don't push it off another week. But uh, I've paid for them. So... Absolutely. Well, that's awesome. I'm glad you're you're at least going to have them for that. Sean Chadwick, thank you so much for the three dollar super chat. Well, super sticker rather with that thumbs up fist bump exercise pair. Very much appreciate you. Thanks for showing the love and support. I hope you're doing well. Only Oscar says yes, James. DIY CO two would be super informative from you. Well, I appreciate the vote of confidence. <clears throat> Who knows? I may do one. Um, I still have other videos that I have either done or I'm working on or lined up uh, for like the live foods and things. Uh, I did, I started to do two last week and YouTube is like, we already hate you. So don't do anything else. So I didn't. So we're going to have the, the standard video tomorrow because we did the Thursday night live stream. And then I did the Friday video and then we did the Sunday members only. And then YouTube was like, we've kind of had enough from you for the week. Just chill out. We're not showing you any you know, showing your stuff to anybody. So, uh, but I'll definitely put it on the list. If nothing else, just to play around with it. Uh, there are some fun different setups and I could show you how to do a couple different things and give my thoughts on it. If nothing else and have some fun. Chat did jump on me. I knew it was going to, let me get back up here. Robert Ray. And Lots of awesome people in here. Lots of good conversation. I see lots of super chats and gifted memberships, and I promise you I will get to those. Um, and they are very, very much appreciated. I just don't want to bypass the quote-unquote regular chat. Hello, Fistachio. See something from you, Scotty. What's going on? All right, here we go. Back on track. Love the fact that you guys are being so active tonight. That's awesome. That's part of why I cleared the calendar, so we're not doing the, the algae talk. We're just doing the... Hanging out with the chat and answering questions. Scotty the Fish Freak says, uh, Ed, deadline for show entry is tomorrow. Message me if you need help. Don't mind at all. Before <clears> tomorrow <throat> or during tomorrow? Is the message for uh, the deadline is tomorrow for entry. Message okay. if you need help. So I would, would shoot a message when you yep. get a chance. I'll Pistachio, always good to see you. Says, I asked KG Tropicals and they didn't know. Getting freshwater flounders in a 210 gallon, plenty of space. The freshwater flounders that I'm familiar with, I've never seen more than several inches. Um, now there, there could definitely be, because that, that is a, a generic common name. There could definitely be something out there that gets larger. Like, you know, I'm, I grew up in Florida, so we were used to saltwater flounder, which, you know, would get, decent sizing you've got halibut which are related to get a uh, huge but <clears throat> the freshwater flounder that i have always come into contact with in terms of the hobby and aquariums have always been i don't know i, I feel like the the ones that were always listed didn't really get more than six inches if you're asking you've probably researched enough to know that they get bigger than that uh, the key thing that I would look at, there's not so much the overall gallonage, but it would be the footprint of it. So you could have, uh, for example, if we just said, hey, I'm getting Shelly's, should I get a 55 or a, a 50 breeder? Well, uh, a 55 is technically more gallonage, so therefore would be a better tank because it's bigger, but it's really not because it doesn't have that massive wide footprint. Uh, so it doesn't have all that floor space that they're going to use on that footprint. So I would just kind of double check on that just to make sure. And kind of if you can get the scientific name for it, look it up just to verify how big they're going to get. Because I, I hate to say that, yes, that's fine. The ones that I've come into contact with, that would be fine from everything I know. Uh, but you may very well have a different one there that, you know, gets bigger than the ones I'm familiar with. 
I think Depths Unknown, Jason, uh, has one. And I don't think it's... I've seen shrimp walking on it, so I'm guessing it's probably only three to four inches. But I don't know how big of a tank case it's in. So you might want to check out Depths Unknown and uh, throw him an ask. Absolutely. There you go. All right. Oh, there it is. See, I saw one that wasn't highlighted, but I'm going to grab it real quick because I found it. Justin Edwards says, would you suggest keeping a pistol brelii with CPDs? I have eight CPDs and a 20 long. I may also grab some rummy nose. Uh, if this isn't compatible, any suggestions for a show fish in this setup? You want to start with that one? You want me to take it? You go for it. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I would, I would probably leave out the rummy nose for now. Um, and try and see how that works before adding the rummy nose just so that you're not super cramming the tank i love 20 longs i've got a ton of 20 longs they're one of my favorite tanks um aside from 40 breeders but i would i just don't feel like i would put the rummy nose in there personally uh and i would try it out with the epistol and the cpds for adding those rummy nose and see how they work out um i mean the cpds are are quick little fish so i don't think you'll have much problem with them being safe so to speak um even if the epistos did get ornery with them but the episto got ornery i think that cpds are so darn quick that they could just kind of get out of the way a uh, big thing with anything if you are worried about <clears throat> any kind of aggression would be line of sight breaks you know having some decor some plants in there uh, which recommend plants for pretty much any tank anyways but I would start with that, and I would haul off on those rummy nose. Maybe wait till you've got another tank to put the rummy nose in. It's going to have a little bit more room. Because the great thing about rummy nose is they really, really shine when you've got a large group of them. So I, I think, uh, I know just for me, I have always enjoyed them more when I can see, you know, a group of 20, say, um, all together in a bigger tank versus dropping six into a smaller tank. That's just my thoughts. Anything you I, want to add on there? I think I agree with every single thing you said. I mean, thank you, buddy. That's that's why we pay you the big bucks. Is to, <laughs> did he want to try to find a show fish to go with it? Also on the twenty, because I uh, that was that was uh, if go ahead and throw the uh, the show fish option out there. Go ahead. Well, I mean, if you're gonna do something, go maybe a little different and go with like a yolo yo yo loach or something like that. Just because they're kind of wild and crazy occasionally and they show a lot of color. But uh, they're not going to be too aggressive or anything. And they might actually take care of a snail problem if you have that or a little bit of one. Did go. I say yo-yo? I meant yo-yo, not dojo. And I know that yo-yos aren't normally considered a show fish. But a 20 long isn't really your best fish tank for show fish. Unless you're going to be showing maybe like a beta or something. I think you can do well with the uh, some of the epistos because some of those I would yeah. consider some really flashy show fish that can do well in a quote unquote smaller tank. Mountain Greenery saying hello. Hello, Mountain Greenery. Uh, Leslie Perry says, does plant fertilizer raise nitrates? Uh, I new to live plants. Be nice might be a stupid question. We, we are always nice, Leslie. And there are no stupid questions, just stupid guys in yellowish orange shirts that run streams on Thursday nights. Uh, so yes, so ideally what you're looking for, um, I guess technically I should say yes. And then I guess no, because there would be some ways that you would essentially guess for the most part, we're going to stick with the basic guess. There are probably some crazy things that you could get off into in the world of, um, science and chemistry where, you know, people are, are dosing more heavily on the ammonia and hoping for uptake there, but really it's still getting transitioned over to nitrite and the nitrate. But basic answer is yes, you can disregard all of that. Um, what you're looking for, ideally, is to have nitrates that are somewhere between, uh, I generally aim for like 20 to 40 parts per million, uh, that are derived from your fertilizer. So what does that mean? So that means you want to make sure that your tank is cycled and hopefully seasoned, uh, that you've got a well-established biodiversity in there. And so everything's getting processed. And so you're not really registering any nitrates without having the fertilizer in there. 
and so you're, you're testing um you could use you know the, the master test kit or test strips i like the the cup test strips because they're quick and they're they're cheap <laughs> it's like the api strips from back in the day where it's like gosh i have to pay like a dollar to test every time i test um and i still have a master test kit but it just takes a long time especially if you're doing multiple things but um i would test look at what my nitrates are running pre-fertilizer so that i know i've got that under control and then just dose depending upon what fertilizer you use i would start off by following the instructions and then check and see what your nitrates are running then now let's say that you know that <clears throat> maybe your tank typically runs five parts per million on nitrate or 10 that's typically what you're running and then you start dosing fertilizer and you say okay well that, now it's i'm testing it and it's a 30. you, you could typically say that we know you know, or we think at least anyways, that 20 of that parts per million is derived from the fertilizer. Now, I would say you might even see uh, where maybe it was at a 10 and then you start dosing and it goes up to a 30, but then it kind of levels out at a 20. Uh, I, I could definitely see that happening in a planted tank because as those plants grow and they, you know, sprout off and you get new things depending upon what type of plant you're doing now you've got more plants doing more uptake so they may have brought it to where your baseline nitrate would be a zero because you've got more plants developed in there so now you are legitimately dosing 20 parts per million of nitrates but yes you are at least on the fertilizers i've used and especially the all-in ones you are dosing to where a certain amount of nitrates is added to your tank and it's derived from that fertilizer I probably could have done a, a quick yes on that, but just in case anybody else was curious, anything you want to add before I grab the next one, buddy? Nope. That I agreed with everything you said there. All righty. This is why I try to let you go first on some of them. <laughs> All right. I'm going to throw this one to Ed. Let's see. Packers 94 four says, hi, I just got a tiger koi half moon placot beta and was wondering if you had any tips on introducing it into a community tank. Right now I have Molly's Buenos Aires Tetris an auto and a clown pleco. Um, you should be fine. I would probably, I don't like when I add them, I'm not going to add, like do anything special, like put them in a bowl or a, uh, a breeder box for a while to let them see everything. When I put that bag in there, float them. That's enough. I think for everybody to say, realize, Ooh, there's going to be a bigger fish. Cause they'll all go check out what's in the bag. And then you release them. And, uh, he's a, a placot mm -hmm. so he'll be a little Half quicker moon. than the average one but he might take off you know pick off a few of your uh fry but that's all right absolutely chat jumped i mean i'm trying to get back up to the last highlighted thing here uh so my thoughts would be yeah you know, pretty much along with ed the biggest piece of advice that i would give you is to make sure that you're adding that fish when you are available to keep an eye on the situation and observe what's going to happen you know, don't add it right before going to bed or right before you're going to work or, hey, I've got to go out of town for, you know, two or three days. Let me throw this fish in here. Make sure that you do it when you've got some time to actually be around the tank so that you can observe and see if there are going to be any issues straight from the get go. I think you'll be fine. Uh, again, that goes back to some line of sight breaks. As Ed mentioned, that finage on that particular fish allows it to be a little more quick and nimble, uh, but I, I think you'll be OK. And just yep. with it, with any time we add fish, keep an eye on it. Make sure it's not going to be a disaster straight from the get go. One thing I always do when I add a new fish, I also keep the lights off, not in the room, just on the tank yep. for 24 hours. So that way, because uh, it kind of, I think the darkness kind of lets everybody relax a little better too. But when it's brighter and it's a new fish, sometimes they're like, whoa, and they're a little more stressed. So the, the lights down dark keeps those fish from getting too stressed absolutely uh ken Surdian aquatics says i use the citric acid and baking soda kit it works amazing i have three tanks using that system and there's a lot of follow-up the nano aquarium guy in scruffy city aquatics also do saying they do the same thing uh so i may have to to give that a go and, and do a video on that since it's yeah it, it smells good. good yeah it yeah, i have I, to give it a shot that's what Rob was using was the citric acid and uh, uh, baking soda. Yeah, absolutely. 
but it was like in a professional <laughs> container, so it like pulled it's the fancy. gas out. It's pretty, yeah, it's pretty neat. I think the whole setup costs about seventy five bucks. That's still not too bad, and then you don't have to buy the canisters. Yeah, that's not too bad. Oh, oh, I guess one tip I would give on CO two is try and find a used canister, um, used cylinder when you start out, uh, because we have seen people that. Uh, will go and they'll buy this beautiful, you know, pretty shiny brand new tank and they go to take it in and have it filled. And you generally, you're not getting it filled. You're getting it swapped. So you walk in there with this pretty new tank with this, you know, pretty paint that you've got on it. And you walk out with a used cylinder because it's a swap out program, not a, a filling program necessarily. So plus they're cheaper to get used than they are new. Uh, Sebastian, excuse me, Sebastian Elifritz, we did get your question. Uh, if you missed it, just go back. It was one of the first things we answered with the angels, uh, or you may have asked it a couple of times before we didn't get to it. But appreciate you being here and thank you for the question. Mark Sturlson, thank you so much. Gifted five Fish Room Fever memberships. Raise awesome. the roof for Mark there. Very kind of you, Mark. We appreciate that very much awesome guy right there uh we will continue to do the members only live streams on sundays at 2 p.m eastern time uh and then of course there's all the behind the scenes stuff there's a members only discord which i'm not super active in the discord because i just don't really discord much but uh, i try and poke my head around through there and there are a lot of people that are very active in that so lots of stuff for those new members that were gifted by mark ken's 3d and aquatics mountain greenery Brian, the Nano Aquarium guy, and Craig, all gifted memberships by Mark. <clears throat> so thank you, Mark. Leslie Perry says, uh, Fisher Fever, can you tell who hits the like button? Just wondering, maybe start calling people out if they don't. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, Leslie, I can see exactly which ones of you hit the like button and which ones did not. And out of 152 of you, I know for a fact, Funny Viper. Leslie hit the like button. Uh, no, I, I can't see who hit the like button. I can see we've got 68 likes, and I appreciate that. Do me a favor. If you're still hanging out, the 1,500 of you that are still here, um, hit that like button. Or if you, you, you're here and you're just here because you hate us and you want to yell at your, your screen and say mean things to us, hit the thumbs down button. Uh, but let, let YouTube know something. You know we're, we're horrible, but we're not quite that bad. So smash that like button. I do very much appreciate it. Uh, we always hope to try and get... 100 likes just so you could YouTube can go, well, I guess they're not that bad. We'll let them keep going. But thank you, Leslie. Hippie John the Fisherman using that membership milestone super chat. Been a member for three months, says anyone who isn't a member yet, show James some love. The heart and the peace on there. Hippie John, very much appreciate that. Always good to see you. Thank you. Thank you for your support and being a member. All right, let's get burning through here. Um... I'm going to butcher your name. I'm going to say Je Jedi. It's not Jedi. But we're just going to call you Jay. We're going to call you Jay because I used to people just call me Jay back in the day. So, uh, Do you have any cool water stocking ideas for 150 gallon tall, heavily planted? Mm. Ed? I see your uh, mind working over there. Ooh, yeah, I know. Cause it's so much fun. I would probably go and collect something native. Like I know I would go probably straight down to Alabama or Georgia and get some Tennessee shiners. <laughs> and I know that sounds funny since I live in Tennessee, but it's illegal for me to take Tennessee shiners from Tennessee. But they're a beautiful fish. They're about an inch to two inches long, and they're red, and they have a lot of pop. They like the cool water. But all the shiners are neat, and the darters are also awfully yeah. neat too. So, yeah. Absolutely. I'm going to pull an Ed and go, I agree with that completely. <laughs> Zen Ginger's asking if I just woke up. Maybe I did, Zen. Quit picking on me. The mods are being mean, folks. I'm no, just kidding. Um, well, yes, I, I, I sleep. Thumbs up yet. Yeah, Zen hasn't hit the thumbs up. It's showing me right here. She's one of, she is the longest running member. Um, and she hasn't hit the thumbs up. And she's a moderator. I oh, can't believe it. Uh, no, I sleep in the afternoons and evenings. I don't sleep at night or in the mornings. So, yeah, I did wake up about an hour before the stream. So, I normally try to get my sleepy face gone, but it just wasn't going away. All right, we've got a question from Quote. says, uh, I'm going away for a week and just wondering, is there anything I need to do for my tanks? I have a 125-gallon African cichlid tank, a 40-gallon turtle tank, 
a small fry tank, and a small guppy slash plane tank. So anytime I'm going to go away for a week, the, the big thing that I do is just try to make sure that I've got good water parameters leaving out. I do a lot of water changes anyways. Um, but let's say maybe you do water changes twice a month and you would be missing a water change in that time frame that you're going to be gone. I would just get the water changes done before I leave just to make sure that the parameters are good. Uh, don't go toss a ton of food in there right before you leave. We see that mistake happen fairly often. People will overfeed a tank because they're worried that they're going to be out of town and their fish are going to starve. And that almost always will do more harm than good because it's going to you know, bounce up your ammonia and then convert nitrite and nitrate and throw your parameters all out of whack and can easily crash your tank. You may, with the African cichlids, um, you may come back to a little bit of aggression aggression issues from having not fed for the week nothing's going to starve except uh, i do wonder with a small fry tank i don't know exactly what you've got so it's hard to answer that um you know so like to take i've got uh, a bunch of guppy fry in and it's got like plant growth and a bunch of mulmy stuff and all of that i know that those fry would be fine to kind of pick through the tank for a week and be okay uh, my uh, zebra danio fry, I know, would probably not make it through the week without having some sort of food just because they're still super small. And I've got another batch of them and uh, I could could maybe get them set up knowing well enough to know to get them in a tank with lots of moss. It's already got some infusoria in it and things like that. Uh, but the fry tank would be the only one that I might potentially worry about just wondering what you've got or not knowing what you've got in there. Other than that, the fish will be fine for a week. Uh, fish are, are pretty much always eating. They're usually pecking at something in the tank, and they'll find stuff to eat. And it's like, well, you know, normally I wouldn't go nibble on this algae on the glass. But since I don't have my favorite cichlid pellet right now, I'm going to go nibble on this algae a little bit. I'm going to go pick at these, um, you know, little critters and things that we get in our tanks, which, you know, it's just part of having that biodiversity in there so i wouldn't really worry except anything but maybe the the fry tank and i would kind of look into what fry you've got and what you could maybe do to get them set up to where they would be good for the week but that's my two cents over to you ed um just to be a little different because i agree with everything he said um would be there are like for the cichlids you're probably feeding them some type of pellet and you could always get like a one of those machines that drops a little bit of food in there every day, you know, but I wouldn't recommend that for anything that you feed flake to, you know, cause it's just going to get gummy and gross in there. But uh, you could put that on your cichlid tank and maybe they won't be aggressive towards each other. And I don't know, maybe if you don't have a lot of plants in the cichlid tank, you know, that for plants, you know, because plants invite other things to grow in your tank that gives them things to eat. And if it's just rocks in them, maybe that or otherwise they're going to eat their fry you know if somebody just popped out a mouthful of babies they're probably going to be gone when you're back if you know they're yeah. hungry yeah, or they're going to fight to defend them it's good points absolutely um yeah i i go with what ed said on that um my, my big thing is be my big thing is be wow we don't grammar around here uh my big thing is I wouldn't be overly concerned. That's where we see more issues caused typically is people panic and then they do a bad um, and that screws them up. And it's like, man, if I had just left that alone, I probably would have been okay. Uh, so that, that's what I would kind of go with that thought process. Whips world. What's going on, buddy? Love you, my friend. Says, uh, and this is a $20 super chat. I'm throwing down the gauntlet and challenging you so-called... <laughs> And now he put that in caps. That's why I overemphasized it. Fish room fever fans. And put your money where your thumbs are so we can get this man to the clash. Time is running down. It's time. Let's win this one for Jimmy James. The only person I, I know that calls me Jimmy James. But Whip's a big dude. I'm not going to tell him he can't call me Jimmy James. Plus, he might, you know, want his shirt back or something. I like this shirt. Seriously, Whip, thank you. I do appreciate that. Um, I do have... Transportation is arranged um, so to get there. Uh, I am kind of trying to figure out what the heck I would do for a room if I did 
take up the transportation offer. So that's kind of where we're at with that situation with, uh, and normally I wouldn't bring it up and I, I appreciate you brother I really do, but that's kind of what I'm looking at is, well, I got a way to get there and back, but what, where am I going to stay? And I'd be like, well, I could stay in my car, but I wouldn't be going in my car. So, um, that is where we're at just to give you the honest update whip since you have been a, a forerunner on pushing for that hard. Hey, Victoria Lee. Good to see you here. Okay, we did get that one. I am running a little bit more than the standard 15 minutes behind, so I'm going to see if I can power through a little bit. Um, our Aquatic Universe with Mike B with the $20 Super Chat, throwing it out there for the Clash Fund. Says, the Clash, can't wait. I, I would love to be there. Um, I am uh, I'm trying to work on it and see how we can make that happen. Uh, uh, there, there's a lot going on right now, uh, which is awesome. But, you know, there's the Kentucky uh, Fish Club meeting this weekend. And we've got uh, Aqua Shell is not too far away. We've got the Clash. Uh, there is the IFGA annual out in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. That's the weekend after Aqua Shell. There's a lot going on. Um, yeah, I am. I do very much appreciate that aquatic universe with Mike B. Thank you so much. I didn't give Whip a dance either. We're going to do a little dance. We're going to give both y'all two thumbs up. We do appreciate that very, very much. Uh, so I'm going to do my best to take that, uh, the funding that you all are throwing there and see if we can't make that work. Of course, the fun thing about YouTube is always the fact that it wouldn't be anything that comes through now doesn't come through until like a month and a half from now was when they actually pay it out. It's on a very backed system, but I appreciate you. And I am I'm trying to figure out what I can do to make it happen since you all really want me to get up there. And I would love to hang out with you all. I love my fishy friends. All right. Go back up here. Make sure I didn't miss that. Uh, Matt's Aquatic says, any recommendations for my five gallon at 72 degrees Fahrenheit? I'm planning on putting chili rasboras in it. Is there any bottom dwellers for it besides pygmy quarries? I'm going to throw Ed another uh, cooler water question there because he's been doing, having Wait, fun with the cooler water. Just a five gallon tank? Yeah. Ooh. Pygmies would have been my go to. Uh, boy, what's the city thing? I mean, let's see, five gallons, you could throw a five inch Oscar in. No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. It's just a joke. They need to make a pygmy oh. uh, pluck out. <laughs> you could put a baby uh, bristle nose in there until it gets so big and just rotate them out. Yeah. I don't know. That's a terrible idea. Um, I mean, that's. <sighs> I don't really have a good one thing. dojo loach. No, not. <laughs> right? The, the real oh, the little coolies? dojos. They're, okay. What are those called? A coolie loach. Yeah. I um, mean, you know, Peck Tech's got the little, um, the, the danger noodle tank that's got some, some coolies in there. Yeah. Not a dojo coolie. But I, but yeah. then you're never going to see it. No. It, it's, it's really hard to recommend stuff for a five gallon, um, especially when our, our typical recommendation that was, was smart of you to, to throw that in there and go, nope, that's what you're going to say. I don't want that one. Um, I don't really have a good answer for you, Matt, and I apologize. Normally, I try to have something on mind that would Three work in situations, cats. but there you go. Yeah, uh, I mean, I would say we've got a hundred and you know fifty-ish people hanging out in here. Let's see if anybody else has some good suggestions in the chat. There's there's always somebody that that's like, hey, I know of this, you know, not so common fish that would work great in that particular situation. Right, let me get back up here because my chat did jump on me, which is awesome. I appreciate that you all are being active and having a good time. Were shrimp automatically not in there? You could do like some shrimp or maybe a little bitty cr crab's going to crawl out too. Hmm. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, I, I do like shrimp. Uh, that's mostly what I do in five-gallon tanks, or I have the five gallons that I use for starting off breeding colonies of live bears so like i had um i won't digress too far because i'm behind but you know i took uh two pairs of endlers that just were not 
producing in a 20 gallon, moved them to a 10. They still weren't producing, moved them to a five where the males could really get a hold of the females and the females couldn't run too far. And boom, we've got fry. So that's, that's most of what I do with five gallons. Richard said a panda Corey. The only thing is we like to keep our Corey's with little friends. So you, I would want to keep at least three together. And I still think that's a little too small for three panda Corey's. Yeah. And I'm, I'm really like, you can, you can do three, but I really prefer like seven. Yeah. So, um, but yeah. So I don't know. I'll, I'll think on that. Maybe I'll think of something in the next week. I'll be like, Hey, if you're still listening this week, I got an idea for you. Uh, Michelle Crisco says, uh, just subbed after hearing KG tropicals. I mentioned you enjoying the vibe. My 55 gallon is live bear party with Guppy and Platy and Corey's. Can I add six ish programmies? Haven't kept them ever, but want something new. Uh, well, first off, welcome and thank you for being here and hitting that subscribe button and all the, the fun things to tickle the algorithm. That's always appreciated. It makes YouTube like me a little bit more. Um, and then they're nice to me sometimes. So thank you for that. So yeah. live beer party and a 55 guppies platties. And then you've also got Corey's six ish programmies. I don't know that I would start with six. And I know we're just like, hey, I want seven Corey cats, but I don't know that I would necessarily start with six programmies. Um, and of course, I'm sure you already know that there, you probably already got it going on anyways with guppies and platies with, you know, fry predation and things. It, it's typical with that setup. Um, my opinion, and this is all I have to offer, again, Ed and I have never claimed to be professionals at anything and probably never will. Uh, but my opinion would probably be to, I personally, I personally, here's what I would do if it were my tank. Uh, I would start with three and see how that goes. Um, I don't know how heavily stocked it is on the guppies and, and platies. When you say it's a live bear party, I'm kind of envisioning like, you know, a 55 with, you know, maybe 150 fish swimming around everywhere. Uh, in which case, I think everything would be fine. And you may be able to throw six of them in there and not have any problems. Um, or you might throw a, a posse in this thing and, you know, they go to town and just start wearing everything out. Um, not necessarily likely, but I tend to try to err on the side of caution. Um, that's my thoughts. I'll turn it over to Ed for his, his professional opinion. <laughs> um. Yeah, well, I like how he said three because, uh, you know, if it it's going well, because maybe she wants them also to get rid of some of her fry because she might have yeah. too many. And if it looks like they're not putting a big number, like your fry isn't going down, because, like, maybe she doesn't want to call it, so that she's letting them call the fish for her. Get three more, and then, like, if you wait a couple months, then there'll be different sizes, and then actually I think kind of looks cooler to have so everything isn't exactly the same, you know? So I don't think it's bad to have one that's always, or a couple that are a half inch smaller than the others just because they're a different age and they're from a different, you know, gene pool and everything. So you might get better results or, you know, just better luck. Like if all of this one, because they're normally, fish stores are getting like groups of fish that are all from the same spawn, mm -hmm. you know? This way you're going to get a different group. So maybe you're going to get a bunch that might have cancer that might have short lives. If you're getting them from another spawn, at least maybe you'd be also adding to their life one way or the other, you know, for health reasons. Uh, that is also a very valid point. Oh, YouTube's being a jerk. I, I know we had some stuff that I missed. I'm going to have to go back into the other screen to find it because my second screen is just saying that there's no Super Chats or members, and I know that's not true. Um, so, no, we did just have a new member, and we had some cool. Super Chats. So I have to go back in there and find that in just a second. Shame on you, YouTube. See, we didn't give them enough thumbs up, so now they're saying, hey, we, we, we don't like you. Um you want to do the product of the week? That is something Ed and I have talked about for a long time. Uh, we are going to start doing a product of the week segment. It's going to vary. It's not always going to be from the same people. Over to you, Ed, while I find this. This is the new shark that you can find on Keep Fishing. Keep. Wait, wait. No. Keep Fish Keeping. 
Steepersteepin.com. Did I say that right? John and yes, Lisa's. Steepersteepin.com. <laughs> oh, man. I should have. But uh, they sell these. That's where I got mine. I've got the smallest and the largest. The largest is already in my 75 gallon tank. Oh, and I just dropped half of it. These work really cool. The, the battery or the, the cable is real long, the power line. But look, I love how it's all magnetic. So you can take this off and, oh gosh, I need to put my glasses on. I probably should have uh, experimented with it a little more right beforehand. <laughs> oh, there we go. And you can like have a chamber where you can put charcoal or something. If you just put meds in your thing, in your tank, or maybe you want to try to get uh, tannins out, you can put cor uh, charcoal in there and uh, or carbon rather. So you can, you can do different things. The, the larger tank or the larger filters, basically it's all got the same head. They just have extra bottoms, so they go three down. What John likes is it has a spray bar at the top that can go down whoops, or up. So the spray bar comes out right here. Uh, you can have this up at the top to pull air into it, so you're also adding extra oxygen into your water flow because it's being sucked in here and shot out here. It has a really neat feature that I really like, how it sticks to your the back of your tank, it's also magnetic. You just stick this on the outside of your tank. Well, actually, uh, you stick this part outside of the tank and it holds it up right up against the glass so you don't have suction cups, which is pretty cool. I've got the old one to compare it to. Now, it's a little more boxy, but I think it's a lot bigger. It adds more to it. The old one was neat because it also had all the the magnetics that put it together to make it real easy. But I really think the Sharks are a really neat internal canister filter. Absolutely. And they also act Very as cool. like a power head, too, in your tank. It just, I really like these little guys. Good stuff. And thank you for the product review. I'll have next week's product review. You'll have to tune in next week to see what that's going to be. Uh, so it's not going to show me the new members. I know we had at least one new member. I apologize. YouTube's being mean and I can't find your name. But I appreciate you joining the, the Fisher and Fever family and becoming a member. Of course, that gives you access to the behind the scenes stuff. Um, you know, the of course, the emojis and stuff in the chat. You get your membership badge and then access to the Discord as well for the members. We did have one super chat that ran away on me, but I found it. It lets me see those. Membership takes about 24 hours to update on the back end uh, to show me. But uh, Craig Donner said, uh, this is $5 super chat. Uh, I'm broke till my monthly invoice is paid. I hope this little bit helps. I, I appreciate that, but I, I never want anybody to be in a position where um, they're strapped for cash and they're, they're giving me money. Um, that is very much greatly appreciated. Um, and, and every little bit helps. It really does. But I never want anybody to. I never want anybody to be in a position where they're like, "Hey, I'm waiting on some money, and I don't really have much right now." And then they're giving me money. I always feel bad for that because it's. I love you guys. You're an awesome group. Um, but if you don't have it, don't feel bad ever at all, please. But it is always very much appreciated and never expected. <clears throat> so thank you. I'm going to try and burn through some questions here because we've only got 10 minutes left. Y'all have been an awesome crowd tonight. And this is part of why I left it open was so that we could get to as many questions as possible. Packers 9404 says, any tips on doing a bonsai aquascape? I'm debating between using Christmas moss or Monte Carlo, uh, but it would be my first time doing anything like that. Uh, so I've not specifically done a bonsai. I have played around with a lot of different plants and rocks and hardwood and stuff like that. I do really like using the mosses. Uh, if you're not familiar with using superglue cyanoacrylate, um, I wouldn't say it's necessarily the best probably for something like that, just because it can be hard to cover your tracks if you're not familiar with gluing mosses onto stuff and you've not got a lot to work with. So in that particular instance, I might go with the black uh, thread or black twine 
um, and tie it on there and just let it kind of attach and grow in. And it usually will either a cover that black thread up or you can snip it off down the road. Uh, whereas super glue, if you screw it up and it shows it's, it's going to show and it's always going to show. And all you can do is try and go in and patch back over it. Um, yeah, I do love using the mosses for stuff. I like Monte Carlo too, but I'm a huge fan of using mosses. Uh, and then if you're doing any type of rock work, uh, I, I completely stole this from, from Tanner over at Serpa Design. So now I'm going to get all his viewers, right? Uh, That'd be nice. Never be afraid to break rocks up. Uh, I think some of the, the most fun and the best stuff I've done was had some really nice micro detail to it, which I think kind of goes hand in hand with doing bonsai work. So if you're going to have any rock work, you can take, say you're using Dragonstone, break it into smaller pieces. And then I do it in... Um, uh, kind of like a burlap, but like some, some heavy cloth, um, break it up and you can get it into like really fine stuff. And then you can even get it into powder and you can do a lot of really neat detail work, um, with some of that really fine stuff in terms of any rock you might be adding around the base of it or building up. Leslie like Curry says, should have been, I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I like that you said burlap because I normally use an old pillow case, which really messes it up bad. <laughs> yeah, and you're likely to put a hole in what you're using when you're hitting it with a hammer and it's got a rock in it. <laughs> I have a video out on a, a bonsai with moss. It's probably like three mm -hmm. or four years old, but I have it. That's right. That, yeah, it's that's been and I used time. way yeah, too absolutely. much glue, and I killed a lot of the moss. So I like he said, like he said, to use the twine is much better, and I really should do a mm -hmm. follow up on that because. Uh, most of it didn't grow, so it's only got a few spots. Absolutely. Uh, Leslie says, I should have been specific. I want to get live plants to reduce my nitrates. Uh, isn't that why live plants are better? I have five tanks from a 5 to a 125. So yes, and they will reduce your nitrates. That is definitely part of why they're better is they help naturally absorb those nitrates along with a lot of other factors that I won't dive deep into at the moment, but absolutely. Um, typically what we find is the plants do so well once you get them going at absorbing the nitrates that they kind of run out of food. And that's where you run into dosing the all-in-one fertilizers like we were talking about. But yes, uh, if you just wanted to put them in there and let them reduce the nitrates to nothing and then not feed them, you could definitely do that. But I think like a lot of people, once you get plants really going, you're going to fall in love with them and you're going to want more of them because you're going to go, hey, this is really cool and I can get free, free plants from propagating the stuff I'm growing at home. And that's where a lot of us start doing the, the fertilizers, but you don't necessarily have to. I mean, you can get some, you know, stuff that's slower to uptake than other stuff is. So it, you don't really have as much need where things are doing a boom and bust. Like, oh, I grew really fast and I soaked up all the nitrates and then I died off because now I have no nutrients. So, yeah, I'm definitely one of the, the main reasons to have live plants. Crown Tail would like to know if I have any advice. And Crown Tail Halfman, it's always great to see you. Um, any advice I should experience dealing with pinecone in bettas? I, I really don't. Um, and it's one of those things that I've heard a lot and I've seen a lot. And a lot of it is so contradictory. Um, just because a lot of times that betta community is a crazy world. Um, a lot of, lot of fishy police people going on over there, which is what it is. Um, but it makes it hard to find real good information without having firsthand. And I just, I don't have the firsthand experience with this, with it, um, et cetera. I was going to say, as much as I hate to say that, I don't hate the fact that I haven't dealt with it, but I do hate the fact that I don't have the experience to tell you, hey, this is what I did in the situation. Um, so the best I could say would probably be to see if John and Lisa have anything on it. Um, or I'm going to throw Lisa under the bus. Send Lisa a message on, on social media. Um, she she gets a lot of messages from people. Lisa would probably have some really good advice. She's got how many bettas now that John built that rack for, and she's taking care of a lot. And I trust her advice, um, and that's why I say I might, might shoot Lisa a message on Instagram or Facebook In or something. In your opinion, though, with other fish at Pinecone, Normally, that's kind of the last legs, isn't it? Because the the fish it, is taking on water and starting to swell. Yes. So it, it typically is. I will give. Typically, like Ed said, that is kind of the final step. And if we've gotten to that point, um, 
there are some things that have happened along the way that didn't get caught. Uh, so, you know, I, I've seen some people that had quote unquote miracle cures, I guess, or things like that, especially with bettas. Uh, but I'm just like, it's a typical, that's kind of like the end of the process, or I, I would almost equate it just to going, Oh, I'm noticing my fish has ick on day 10 of the symptoms after the third, you know, second or third ick cycle. Um, it can be kind of in stage at that point when we catch it. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't have better advice for you, Crown to Half Moon. Matt's Aquatics says, could I keep uh, my Bolivian Ram with a mono shrimp, if not any centerpiece for a 20 high that's shrimp safe? I mean, you might be okay. That Bolivian Ram, it, it's going to depend on personality. To give a quick answer, because we've only got a couple minutes left, um, a quick answer would be, might be fine with some Amanos, but those things can be ornery, especially if those Amanos like to go in the area that that ram kind of deems is that rams. Um, and they could definitely pick pieces off of them in chunks and leave you with you know, some pieces of Amanos hanging out. Uh, I think if you had a lot of coverage in there, um, you could make it work. Uh, it could also be a complete disaster, just depending upon how you set up the tank. And uh, then I'm going to throw over to Ed for the second half centerpiece fish for a 20 high shrimp safe. Mm. Shrimp safe. Oh, man. Because big fish, shrimp are so tasty. And a lot of your centerpiece fish are bigger fish. Um, you see, I've seen bettas work. I, I've seen a betta work with shrimp. And then I've seen... Betas be jerks to shrimp, but uh, maybe a, a great big gigantic uh, betta would be a really pretty fish in there that would just kind of float around. Uh, are you thinking of any good, nice show piece? Uh, down off the top of my head, I was I was letting you handle that while I scroll yeah. through to see if there was anything I needed to catch that was critical, oh, anything mission well, critical here. And I've seen my angelfish walk, swimming around with a shrimp in their mouths, you know, because they got a small mouth, but they still try to chew them up or put them down. So I, I'd like to say angels, but I think angels will eat them too. I think just about everybody. Um, I haven't had much experience with Grammys and angels. I used to have lots of Grammys when I was younger, but I never had shrimp to say with Grammys. So I don't know if, uh, like a samurai grommy or something like that. That was a real pretty cool grommy. Would look good. Um, oh, how about a half beak? There's some really neat. I talked about half beaks earlier, but half mm -hmm. beaks are really cool. They kind of look like a, a gar or a pike, but they're not. They're a lot more docile than them. So maybe even a half beak at the top that'll float. You know, the, they're going to stay at the top, but in your shrimp are going to stay where the predators aren't and they're probably going to stay at the bottom so maybe a half beak there you go uh, i think that could be a pretty tank absolutely all right i've got a couple things i'm just going to answer the questions uh just to grab what i can grab because we did get a little bit further behind but we had some great questions tonight i have not personally used barkeep's uh barkeeper's friend um the only thing that I would advise is just like with anything you clean a tank out with, make sure that you rinse it very, very thoroughly. Um, if it's uh, a rimmed tank, which most of us have, it's got the black trim on it. Make sure that you get anything out of there that's, so it's not going to leach out from under that trim. But generally speaking, I mean, you could wash a tank down in Dawn dish soap as long as you rinse it back out thoroughly. That's one of the great things about glass, not having a porosity to where it's going to absorb that stuff and then leach it right back. Generally speaking, your vinegar fine. works great. You know, it's an yeah. acid that's going to eat up minerals that are left from evaporation and stuff too. So, and vinegar's safe. And, yeah, a whip was asking about how many uh, first knuckle thumb size shrimp to feed a two foot arowana. Um, I don't know. I'd probably so I would start with like half a dozen, throw them in there, see what he or she does, um, and then feed a couple more so when i feed my piranhas um i use them as an example because it's i don't feed them quote unquote the same amount every day they eat a little different 
uh, I feed them a little bit at a time. So I go in there and I drop a little bit in and okay, they ate all that. And they drop a little bit in. Okay. They ate all that. Uh, reason being is with those guys, they, they will scavenge off the bottom, but they don't tend to do so because they're just so accustomed to food coming in that they're like, we're not really worried about looking for food. We know it's going to come from the surface. Uh, so I feed them small portions and I might stand there for five minutes and feed them, which is fun because I get to enjoy that fish and hang out with it. So I would just kind of get a couple in there, let them eat them, get a couple more. Um, if you start to notice that maybe they're not, you know, boom, going forward or that that arowana is not really, you know, zoning in on the food. He's like, ah, I'll eat that, I guess, but I'm not like shooting after it. It's when you know they're starting to get full typically. Um, and that's how I would do it. Yeah. I Final to, thoughts here. Oh, sorry, buddy. Go ahead. I, I used to feed uh, my uh, uh, dragon puffer the jumbo krill, and I would feed her, you know, the jumbo krill's about an inch or half inch. And uh, I'd feed her about 10 to 14 a day, twice, well, five to seven a day, twice a day. So that's how much she'd be eating during the day. And eventually Absolutely. she'd just stop eating. Leslie was the new member. Okay, thank you. Sarah J. Sieber was letting me know. It was Leslie that was a new member. That's what I thought, awesome. but it's not. Now it is now it is showing Leslie as a member on there. See, Leslie didn't have the green name and stuff, but I thought it was Leslie. So, Leslie, thank you so much for joining, becoming a member of the Fish Room Fever. Awesome people. Um, we've got like 100 of us now. It's it's a huge party. Um, that is super so. awesome. I hope to get y'all more involved with the Sunday members only live streams. We had a nice little group. And I think as we continue to do that, more and more people will show up as we kind of make it a, a regular thing. Uh, we have a lot of fun. And then we get Raid Aquarium Co-op from there because he's doing his Sunday streams at three. So we always pick some goofy hashtag and go over there. Um, and we're, we're set up so it pops up and goes, hey, Fish Room Fever's viewers have joined. Just like you awesome people did coming over from KG Tropicals. Gonna hit, uh, again, a huge thank you for y'all hanging out tonight. Hope you had fun. Hopefully we'll see you back again. Make sure I didn't miss anything. Stephen P. 2003 Aquatics. I know you did this a little while ago, and I don't think I got to it. Stephen gifted five memberships. Stephen's an awesome person. Stephen and Jenna both. Uh, thank you, Stephen. I very much appreciate that. Uh, very kind of you, my friend. MedCal74 becoming a member. Welcome to the team. I feel like you've been a member before, but welcome, welcome back, whichever it is. Um, always good to see you, MedCal. And Stephanie McGettigan with the two ninety nine dollars super sticker, which I think is that cute little fox saying bye-bye. Let me see if I can find it. It is bye-bye. Thank you, Stephanie. A huge thank you to all of you all. We're just going to do all the things. We're going to do all of them. Let's, let's just set it all off. What? What? I, I don't know what's going on here. All right. On that note, as always, Ed, thank you so much for being here. We're going to head over. Are we doing crafted tonight? We are. And Here's an we'll official. Okay. This discus will be going out tonight. All right. So come on over for the giveaway. If you have questions, because I know we didn't get all the way through them, and you would like to bring those over to Chattanooga Ed's, so we'd be happy to take those there from the chat. Um, it's a, I guess you could say a little more laid back, so to speak. It's not quite so rapid fire. So it's a great place to get in some additional questions. If we didn't get to yours, I do apologize. We didn't get to everything. I do my best, but sometimes things take a little bit more in-depth answer than others. But we appreciate you all, each and every one of you. And as always, thanks for being with me. We are doing this, the quote unquote send over, but if it doesn't send you over automatically, you can click on either the link that will be dropped in the chat or at the top, it will say, Hey, the viewers are going here. Click here to follow. We're going to have some fun at Ed's. As always, Ed, thank you for being here. A huge thank you to the moderators, members, lurkers, listeners, super chatters, contributors, questioners, commentators, of course, the replay crew. I love you guys. Till next time, keep your fish healthy. Keep yourselves healthy. Don't be afraid to catch yourself. A little fish room fever. Take care, everybody. Mm -hmm.